Acoustics Engineering Podcast, episode number two, brought to you by Sound Solutions Acoustical Consulting, an independent consulting firm at ssacoustical.com. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I was ready to start discussing some projects and digging into some issues and realize that I should really define some terms uh, so that I don't bog down every episode with a bunch of uh, basic definitions. So I'm dedicating this hopefully brief podcast to defining a few terms. Let's start with sound pressure level. So sound or noise. Noise is really just unwanted sound. It's a term given to pressure that you can detect, that's that's able to be detected by human ears. And it's fluctuations in atmospheric pressures, um, and it can be measured by a sound level meter or a, a smartphone with a sound level meter app, app on it. Uh, and because humans, we can detect this large, huge range of pressures, they express sound pressure levels in this logarithmic scale called decibels. So uh, decibels don't get added, uh, what is it, arithmetically, just like a normal sum. So if you have 50 decibels plus 50 decibels, it doesn't equal 100 decibels. You have to subtract or work out the pressure, add the pressures, and then re-log it together. And so kind of a, a guide is if the numbers are the same or within, um, within one, then you add 3 dB to the larger. So if you have 50 plus 50, that would equal 53. If the numbers are 2 to 4 um, apart, then you add 2 to the larger. And if the numbers are, what, 4 to 9, um, then you add just 1 to the larger. And that's rounding. It's not, not exactly correct, but that gives you the ballpark. And I can put a formula, let me make a note, I'll put a formula on the uh, notes, the show notes, uh, for adding logs, adding sound pressure levels. Uh, then the other thing I wanted to point out is that for a lot of, especially environmental problems or, or issues, they deal with A-weighted sound levels. So if you listen to if you had the same frequency, and I'll, I'll describe frequency, but if you had the same frequency noises, um, same noise levels at different frequencies, some are appear louder than others. So people are more sensitive to higher frequency sounds, such as speech, horns, whistles, than low frequency sounds like motors or engines or bass noises. You're less susceptible to that. And so to, to address this difference in preferen preferential response, this A-weighted scale was developed. And the scale adjusts the sounds so that no matter what frequency, it appears to be about the same sensitivity. It appears about the same to the human auditory system. And so there's a curve with different uh, weightings. And they sum it all together so that even though if you have different noises, uh, some engine or a whistle or these different noises or a, uh, I don't know, a horn or a piano or whatever's going on, the, if you take this A weighting, it'll give you one number so that you can compare them and say, all right, loudness wise, these different noises can all be compared on the same scale. And that's an A weighting scale. Um, common levels, I, I think that are, that people throw out a lot are normal normal conversation at three feet is about 60 decibels. Um, you know, OSHA limits, if you start getting exposure, depending on the duration, but about 80 dB or more, you can start having hearing damage if you get long-term exposure. If it's higher than even short-term exposure, you could uh, get some damage. Um, what's another common one? bird conversation. How about wind through trees around 40 dB, soft library, soft residential, 3540. Uh, and I'll link to a blog that, that shows a table of some of these different uh, levels just so you can get a ballpark of what's offensive and what's uh, 
not too bad. A lot of regulations tend to be around 50 at night, 55 during the day. That's for outside that are considered a disturbance. Um, if you get into road noise levels, it could be a little over 60 uh, that, that suddenly you have to address attenuation. All right, um, sensitivity to changes in noise levels. So I told you, you had two, two sources, two dump trucks together, and you're adding 3 dB um, to the noise. But human sensitivity, if there's a change of 1 dB, it's considered in, imperceptible. If you have a change in noise level of 3 dB, it's considered barely perceptible. 6 dB difference is clearly notice, noticeable. 10 dB, that's like cutting the noise in half or doubling it. And 20 dB change is a four times or one quarter change. Uh, and so note that you need about a 6 dB change for it to be a perceived clearly noticeable change. And so when you're thinking of treatments to a room or to a barrier or to a wall, if you, if you do less than a 6 dB increase, it might not be um, very clearly heard. Um, so, and just to point out that human sensitivity to these changes is very individualized and it depends on the frequency, the background noise, the time it occurs, the duration, if you're expecting the noise or not, your emotional state at that time. So there, there's a lot of factors, but just in general, that 1, 3, 6, 10, 20 is kind of a, a guideline there. And I'll link again to a, a blog so you can see that table. Um, evaluation, uh, okay, equivalent sound level. Here's a, a descriptor that's often used in environmental noise, uh, with environmental noise regulations. And it's called an equivalent noise level. It's kind of an average, I think what I've heard it defined as, if you hold that nose, let, let's say we're dealing with a one hour period. If you hold a, a, that level for one hour, that energy, if you integrate all the energy in that noise, that energy over uh, that one hour period is the same energy as your signal that you're measuring. So it is kind of an energy average. It's, um, you know, your signal that you're measuring may go above it and below it may vary quite a bit, but this is a lot of times in regulations, they'll say, all right, here's the one hour limit. Now you can make more noise than that, but during the hour, you can't exceed that if the hour average or the hour LEQ. There's a day night average sound level, and that's sometimes used for HUD regulations or for um, other environmental noise regulations. And it's a 24 hour descriptor. You take one hour LEQs, so these one hour energy averages, and then at night, when people are more sensitive to noise, between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., you add an extra 10 dB on just those hours. Uh, and generally, it's quieter, so this bumps it up some uh, at night. And it penalizes you if you're making noise at night because you get this 10 dB boost. And then you average over those 24 hours. And again, it's not an arithmetic. Um, you don't just uh, add them up and divide by 24. You're uh, doing an energy average. Frequency, real briefly, is measured in hertz. And the, uh, one hertz is a cycle per second. Uh, with the sound level meter or the app on your smartphone or whatever you're using, you're measuring the sound level and generally in dBA. Um, but you also can look at a spectrum and it looks at these individual frequencies. And there are, even on a small smartphone, you can get an app that'll um, do this fast Fourier transform, this FFT, where it takes that signal and then says, all right, what frequency content do we have? How many of these low frequency waves? How many of the higher frequency? And why that, help, why that is helpful is that if you know what frequencies you're trying to attenuate or absorb uh, or reduce or that you're addressing, or maybe you want to reinforce or diffuse, whatever the situation is, 
you can adjust your treatment to that. So um, if it's very low frequency, you might need more mass or bigger airspace. Or the, it'll help direct how you attenuate it. It's also helpful in noise source identification. So say there's four different noise sources making noise and you want to know which one's the biggest culprit that you have to attack first or attenuate first. Um, looking at the characteristic, you can measure that spectrum up close to each of the noise radiating equipment and then go look at the total noise at your residence or area of concern and see, or at the worker, and see how much you, you might see, all right, there, there's low frequency or a peak or a tone at some frequency is, um, is from a certain piece of equipment, and then you can identify that contribution. Uh, so, th so it's a useful, useful to have the spectrum, know about this, um, that that's a tool that's available. The, I think, other quickly, when you're making noise measurements, it's helpful to have a calibrator, and a calibrator is just uh, usually a piston phone, piston phone, uh, uh, it'll give you a constant signal. You put it on your sound level meter, you run it, it gives you a steady tone, usually a thousand hertz at 114 or 94 decibels, and you can make sure you're, you're not way out of calibration, or if you are, make adjustments so you're in calibration. Um, I'll deal with other terms as we go. I just wanted to hit some of the big ones like dBA and just decibels in general uh, so that I don't have to spend five minutes during each podcast explaining those. So some other terms we'll be hitting as we go, OSHA standards, noise exposure, uh, sound transmission class, impact insulation class, uh, NC and RC for mechanical equipment noise, statistical noise levels, which some regulations deal with, and L10, L50. We'll deal with those you know, when we, we need to. Reverberation time, some of these focusing, some of these um, architectural acoustics issues as well. We'll define them as we go. I don't think it'll be that cumbersome, but I wanted to hit the main ones. Um, you know, that's it for episode two. Next time, I'll, I will hit the road noise project. Thank you for listening to Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast, providing you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday with Sound Solutions Acoustical Consulting at ssacoustical.com. Please feel free to give me feedback. I'd really appreciate hearing from anyone if there's more technical information I should be providing or more general information. I'd really like to know who, my, who I'm reaching and I can help uh, or I'll tailor my uh, future blogs, podcast videos to that audience. All right. Thanks a lot. You can contact me on Facebook. Sound Solutions has a page uh, or email me bill at ssacoustical.com. If you go to the website, there's a bunch of ways to communicate. Uh, thanks a lot. All right, take care.